Oh, there's someone right there. There's someone right there. Close the police! Open the door! Get the dog. Just get it open. If the goal of the war on drugs is to eliminate drugs from the United States, we've lost it, and we lost a long time ago. I mean, meth is king in Tulsa. Oklahoma is a neglected front in the war on drugs, the epicenter of a battle with a forgotten foe, meth. The reason it's so prevalent here is because per capita, Oklahoma is kind of poor. So it's real easy to get a drug that you can make. And here in Oklahoma, no matter what town you go to, there's somebody there that's cooking meth. I grew up in Bartersville, Oklahoma. It's about 40 miles outside of Tulsa. Started off as a weed dealer in high school. Uh, from that, I realized that I could make a lot more money off methamphetamine. And then from there, I decided, oh, the best idea is to start making this stuff. I'm 38, and I've been sober for almost nine years now. Do you feel like that hasn't slowed down the appetite for meth? <laughs> no, no, it ain't slowed down one bit. During the height of Oklahoma's meth boom in 2011, Tulsa police encountered more than 400 highly volatile shake and bake meth labs. But after the state began regulating the sales of Sudafed, meth labs were drastically reduced, but the demand for the drug wasn't. When we started controlling pseudoephedrine in Oklahoma, almost overnight you started hearing about shipments of ice coming in from Mexico. Confused by the slang? Mike can interpret. Okay, uh, meth, crank, crystal, that's, that's all the same thing. Um, you have ice, which is more like a crystal, you know, that, so some people call it crystal. It's really all who you hang out with, what the name's going to be. Again, it never went away, just the sourcing changed. Um, but if, if you put it on a scale, it's just continued to go up since 94 here in Oklahoma, and here we are 24 years later, it's just continuing to go up, meth use is. It's just not cooked as frequently. I couldn't say why, Mike will probably be able to explain that. Corporal Mike Griffin has been busting meth dealers in Tulsa for more than 20 years and is all too familiar with the ebb and flow of the local meth market. So go to Tulsa and talk to Mike. Go to Tulsa and talk to Mike. Right, yeah. We'll do that. The state legislatures at the time will try to take credit for Lazar going, but it's a lie. I mean, I wish it was true because I was the one down there trying to get legislation passed. Yes, ma'am. And and I'm, again, I'm not trying to scare by The cartel's in Oklahoma. All we're going to do is we'll eliminate a drug that they don't supply in mass quantity in Tulsa. I'm told they do in other parts of the state. And they will back, they will start supplying that to Tulsa. What happened was um, the cartels realized that we had a giant demand and they flooded Tulsa with more meth than we'd ever had and it's far cheaper. The statutes aren't stopping people from cooking dope, but there's just no reason to because there's so much meth and it's so cheap that it's just not worth the trouble. Without borders, we have the reign of chaos, crime, cartels. If we don't stand strong for our national borders, then we cease to be a nation. I'm not a political guy. I don't like nor dislike Trump. And this is just my thoughts. Higher security they make the border, the higher demand your local meth manufacturer is gonna go up. It's not like all these addicts are just gonna go cold turkey. That's not gonna happen. So we would have meth labs again the next day. You can't just ignore what we've allowed to cr been created by the criminal organizations and cartels. What you've experienced over the last couple of days, uh, they do it daily, they do it hourly, they live for it. It's Tuesday morning in Tulsa. Got evidence of methamphetamine, heroin, weed, and some ammo, 223 rounds, and two packages for holster. So it could be a couple of pistols, maybe a rifle outside. So again, mainly we're looking for ice, but there was evidence of heroin and marijuana as well. So we'll see. He's dipping back in. Toss police search work, get your hands up! This guy had a gun on that ran off the back. Come outside with your hands Who else up is in and house? open! Who else is in there? <laughs> Let's take that. Hold there. I got it. Okay, we'll work this one. <laughs> that dude ran right outside. outside. <laughs> not, 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 <laughs> that door's open. Huh? Shoot you with pepper balls or something? Shit sucks, doesn't it? After detaining five suspects, the Special Investigations Division conducts their search, and it doesn't take long before they find what they were looking for. Who's your favorite investigator? What do you got? Heroin or ice? Why don't you take a look at that? What is it? Oh, God, yeah. It's our ice. And it's not only meth they find. Oh, oh. Lit, brother. This is all heroin. 
It looks like in, a heroin individually packaged for resale, and that you can smell the heroin, the vinegar smell. Tulsa right now is getting is getting beat up with with heroin and methamphetamine, and it's not. It was super uncommon in the past to have a heroin house and a methamphetamine house have it together in, a, in the same house. Hey, Sarge, yeah. come look at this. This was under the bed. Package dice. I'm gonna take the whole. Thing I gotta to get. To jail. I gotta. Oh, everybody's still still got jail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. These guys are who society sometimes thinks they don't want because they want policemen to walk old lady across the street and read books to kids. And yeah, you got to go when someone's house gets burglarized and you go take a report. But when that's not happening, policemen need to hunt violent evil men actively, enjoy it, go find it because those people are the ones that adversely affect society and I've got a squad full of guys that love it. We arrested less people last year than we had the, the, the previous two years and yet we still are seizing more and it's because of who we're targeting and, and who we're focusing on and those are, are the drug traffickers, the drug dealers who are taking advantage of our citizens with an addiction problem. It's been a strain on my family. You know, I feel like I was saved from addiction and from addictive behavior to save somebody else. And I'll take you guys on in, come on in. We're at a, uh, the Howe Foundation, we call it the three-quarter house. It's a step above what you would consider a halfway house. So we call it three-quarter house. It's actually just a sober living establishment. It's a culture, man. It's, it's here, it's in Oklahoma. I don't foresee meth leaving any, any time. No, it's not going anywhere. Right now, right as we speak, there's probably at least 10 people in Tulsa, at least somewhere in Tulsa, cooking dope. Oh, hell, that's on this, in this neighborhood. Cooking dope. Despite more than two decades of persistent law enforcement and legislative efforts, Oklahoma became a victim of its own success. By stamping out domestic meth production in the state, they only succeeded in creating a new market for more capable suppliers. So what does that say about our ability to combat the war on drugs?